Remember the Titanic? Well, please keep that story in mind when I tell you what happened to me last week when Tracy decided to get on a quiz show and she had to pick the one quiz show which the advertising agency I work for puts on the air. It all began the other morning when our next door neighbor, Tony Marshall, dropped in to see Tracy. Tony's a writer. Of course, Tracy's brother Paul was there too. Paul stops in for breakfast every Tuesday. That's the morning they hose down 65th Street so Paul has to get up early. Oh, Tracy, I gotta run. So soon, Tony? Yeah, I only wanted to tell you to thank Doug for getting me the job. What job? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm writing for a quiz show called The Sky's the Limit. Well, see you later, kids. Hey, uh, yeah. What are you looking for, Tony? Well, I had a script here with all the questions and answers for this quiz show on it. I thought I'd put it on the... Have you seen it, Paul? Uh, what's that, Tony? A script with this week's supply of questions and answers. Oh, well, never mind. I'll get a duplicate copy at the studio. See you later, Tracy. You're welcome, Tony. Tell Doug thanks for the job. I wonder what he was looking for. Did you see anything, Paul? You mean this, Tracy? Oh, you were sitting on it. I'll call him back. Hey, come back here, Trace. Don't you realize we've got a fortune on our hands? You were sitting on it. Well, listen, I got a quick look at it. When I saw what it was, I upgraded it cool and sat on it. Now, dig this. All we have to do is memorize these answers, go down to the studio, and if they call on either one of us, we're a cinch to win a ton of bread. Oh, I don't know, Paul. Tony! Trace! <laughs> Trace, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Now, they give away thousands of dollars on that show. Now, now all we got to do is memorize these, these questions and answers. Now, this is the list for every day this week. We've got two chances they'll call on one of us. Now, if they call on me, I'll know the answer. And if they call on you, you'll know them. Oh, yeah. They might have some ridiculous rule about uh, relatives of agency people being on the show. Uh, you better use your maiden name, Tracy Sherwood. Well, I don't know the answers to any of those questions. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Tracy, we got the answers right here. Now, this is our chance to show the middle class, materialistic, greedy establishment where it's all at. But what do we get out of it, Paul? Money. <laughs> As Caesar said to Brutus, unbeknownst to me, Tracy and Paul went down to the studio to get on our quiz show. I don't watch that program, but later I was told it went something like this. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Art Ledbetter introducing your favorite quiz program, The Sky's the Limit. The questions on this program are sent in by you, the listeners. This is the program on which the contestant can stay on day after day until he's won all the money he wants. But should he miss a question, he loses all the money he's won from the start. So here's our first contestant ready to try for $75. Your name is? Uh, Michael Abbott. And where are you from, Michael? Nome, Alaska. <laughs> well, plenty of people here from Nome, Alaska. Uh, well, here's our first question. Michael, who invented the cotton gin? Uh, uh, uh Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael, I'm sorry. Wrong gin. Well, it was a good try, but you won't go away empty-handed. Here with the compliments of our sponsor is a bar of soap. Thank you. Okay, who do we have here now? Just fine. <laughs> uh, what's your name, my dear? Tracy. Yes? Tracy Sherwood. And where are you from, Tracy? New York City. I see. <laughs> well, not too many folks here from New York City, either. That's my brother, Paul. Huh? It's my brother. Oh, <laughs> that's what I thought you said. Well, anyway, you know the rules, Tracy. You can keep answering questions for days on end as long as you don't miss. You can stop when you like, but remember, the sky's the limit. Now, for $75, who sailed around the world in 1519? Eli Whitney. Huh? What? Did What's you that? ask me about the cotton gin? No, no, I... Who sailed around the world in 1519? Oh, the second question. Uh, what was her name? Madge Ellen. <laughs> Magellan, correct! Now, for the next question. 
for $150. Thomas Edison. <laughs> Correct. <clears throat> now, for $300. <laughs> At the end of that day's show, Tracy had won $4,800 and was still going strong when the commercial cut her short. She was told to come back the following day and carry on from this point. Also the following day, I was working peacefully in my office when Miss Anderson buzzed me on the intercom. When Miss Anderson uses the office intercom, she's apparently under the impression she is a ham radio operator in contact with someone in Bolivia. <laughs> Anderson. Not the Miss Anderson, the famous international intercom expert? Mr. Young, there is no reason to be sarcastic. Miss Anderson, I have explained to you many times by our present means of communication, over coffee, and by registered mail, that no one uses this device except you and me. Now, I know who you are. I repeat, there is no reason to be sarcastic. I am merely identifying myself, which is only common courtesy, which I always observe, even if some people are too sarcastic to observe common courtesy themselves because they are too busy being sarcastic. Oh, I think I've got it now. The old vaudeville team. I'm sarcastic and you're Anderson. Yes, this is Miss Anderson, as you know perfectly well. Well, I'm glad you're perfectly well, Miss Anderson. I'm not feeling so hot myself. I'm obsessed with the delusion that a crazy person talks to me every day from a little box in my office. Mr. Young, if you are referring to me as a crazy person... Miss Anderson, get into my office this instant! <laughs> Mr. Young! Miss Anderson, don't say another word! And sit down! Until I can collect myself! All right, Miss Anderson, you win. You've got me so confused that I can't remember why you're in here. As a matter of fact, I don't even remember, remember why I buzzed you in the first place. You did not buzz me. I buzzed you. You did? Yes, but you were so busy being sarcastic, I did not get a chance to tell you why I buzzed you. Miss Anderson, I'm not being sarcastic now. Please tell me. I buzzed you to tell you that there is a Mr. Samuels in my office. So Mr. Samuels? And Leon Samuels? The sponsor of our quiz program? <laughs> oh, Mr. Samuels, I'm very sorry to keep you waiting, well, sir. I should think so. Well, she didn't tell me... Out, Miss Anderson. Yes, please sit down, sir. Please sit down. Sorry to keep you waiting. The out. I want to see you about our quiz show. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? It's getting ridiculous. Did you see that woman rattle off the answers of those questions on yesterday's show? Well, uh, no, sir, I didn't see yesterday's show. You see, I was... Mr. Young, is it too much to ask you to watch a quiz show? Well, yes. Oh, I mean, no. I, I mean, in, I mean, in television, who has the time to watch television? This is a fine advertising agency. I've got. I don't mind giving out money, but not for those schoolboy questions you ask the contestants. Look at these questions for today. I mean, really, who was it? said I'd rather be right than president. Any child knows it was George M. Cohan? But it was Henry Clay, sir. The answer's right there. Huh? Oh, yeah. I, I don't care. I want tougher questions. Oh, but the viewers send them in, sir. We don't make them up. Well, use tougher ones that they send in. Now, I've got some of them right here. Now, here's my idea of a tough question. Name a plastic, earthy material consisting largely of silicates of aluminum. I don't even understand the question. You see? Now, that's a tough question. We'll use this question today. That'll stop her. And I've got some more tough ones right here. Now, I sent these over to the studio today, and they'll use them. And, Mr. Young, if you can possibly find the time, try and watch our little program today. Give me at least a half hour of your time. Yes, sir. Why, Mr. Samuels? Well, I knew I'd hate myself for it, but I made up my mind to watch the program. If it were only anybody but that Art Ledbetter. Oh, well, the sponsor insisted. So I leaned back in my chair, turned on my combination TV phonograph electric razor. And lucky for me, it wasn't a straight razor. I would have picked it up and cut my throat. Because this is what I saw. Welcome back, Tracy Sherwood. Tracy? You're about to try for $9,600. Do you want to try for it? 
You can stop when you want to. Stop now? Oh, no. Ah, that's the spirit we like. Okay, here's our first question, then. Name a plastic, earthy material consisting largely of silicates of aluminum. You're not asking the right question. Miss Sherwood, we ask whatever questions we want. Oh, but... Miss Sherwood, do you know the answer? Henry Clay? What? Clay? Correct! Congratulations! You now have $9,600! What happened? She says, Miss Sherwood, you killed me. All right. No, okay. Now you can take your money, or you can drive for $19,200. How about it? You go on? Yes, if, if you'll only ask the right questions. <laughs> okay, good. Here we go. Here's our question. Who is the Scottish inventor after whom an electrical unit was named? James Watt! <laughs> now, you have a total of $19,200. Uh, do you want to come back tomorrow for $38,400? Well, yes, if you'll only ask the right questions. <laughs> By the end of the show, I had regained consciousness and turned off the TV. After one hour and two dozen tranquilizers, I managed to get Tracy on the phone. Hello? Hello, is this $38,400? Doc, is that you? Just fine. Honey, we're rich. We're sitting on the establishment. Money's coming in like bread. From now on, it'll be sports cars and Dior gowns and... Diamonds, Woolworths doesn't sell, baby. And honey, you know that necktie you were looking at? Get it. The sky's the limit. Look, Limit, you can't do this thing. That quiz show you were on. It's Doug. I was just telling Paul it's you. Paul's here with me. Where are you, Doug? Tracy, you're not allowed on that program. Nobody related to anybody in this agency is. If the sponsor finds out, we'll lose the account. I'll lose my job. I don't know how you're answering those questions, but you gotta miss out on them. Lose that money. Lose that money? Huh. Tomorrow I get the $76,800 question. Tracy, when I saw you on that show, I hit the ceiling. Honey, that's not the right altitude. <laughs> that's a little humor. After all, I am in showbiz. Tracy, this isn't funny. You mustn't win that money. Why mustn't I win it? If I don't win it, somebody else will. I'm as good as anybody else. We're all created equal. Now, I said you've got to miss out. It means my job if you don't. And I'm going to see to it that you do. I just got an idea. You'll never answer another question on that program. Well, how do you like that? Uh, what's the matter, Tracy? Doug wants me to lose all that money because I'm related to him by marriage. Well, you're not using your married name. You're going under the name of Sherwood. They'll never find out. Doug said he's going to see to it that I lose. Now, how can you lose if you answer the questions? And I know what they're going to do. They're going to put in the hardest questions that listeners send in. Well, now, I took care of it. I sent in the toughest questions anybody would ever think of. Now, come on now. I want you to start memorizing these answers. <laughs> What's the first question, Paul? Got it right here. Summons, you are hereby ordered to a strong paper. Uh, here it is. Name the Secretary of the Treasury under Rutherford B. Hayes. N now, the answer is Sherman. Right, Miss Sherman. Uh, no, Tracy, it's a man, John Sherman. A man secretary? Now, here's the other one. I've sent in about 10 questions under different names. Uh, oh, yes. What is the basic formula for nuclear fission? Albert Einstein. <laughs> well, no, Trace. Uh, what was his formula? Don't ask me. Ask Dr. Spock. <laughs> it's E equals MC squared. Now, remember that. Now, look, I'm going to look up a couple of other questions. Some real dillies. Now, they'll never think that you know the answer, but of course, I'll have coached you beforehand. <laughs> now, what do you know about biology?
Well, I had a little formula all worked out that would stop Tracy from staying on our quiz show the rest of this year and turning it into the new Alaskan Gold Rush. I made an appointment to meet the sponsor at the studio the next afternoon, just before the show went on the air. Hello, Mr. Samuels. Mr. Young, we're ruined. This woman must be stopped. $38,000, do you know how many vats of fingernail polish I have to sell to make that kind of money? Don't worry, Mr. Samuels, I've got the answer right here. Oh, what's that? Here's a question she'll never be able to answer. Name the principal exports of Mesopotamia in 1927. No, 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 she's the kind of woman who would know all about Mesopotamia. But ask her something about her own country. Now, here's one that came in today. Name the Secretary of the Treasury under Rutherford B. Hayes. No, that one's too easy. Uh, who was he? Uh, Pierre Salinger. No, 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 no. E.G. Marshall. See? You don't know, eh? Neither will she. And she won't know this one, either. What is the basic formula for nuclear fission? Yeah, that's a good one. Ask her that one. She'll never be able to answer that one. If she does, Mr. Young, your advertising agency will be doing business with Miss Tracy Sherwood, the owner of the Samuels Parlor Pink Nail Polish Corporation. <laughs> Give me credit. I may not be smart, but I am stupid. <laughs> Instead of fighting for Mesopotamia, I fell for those questions Paul sent in. And while waiting for the show to begin, I bit off all the Samuel's parlor pink off my finger. <laughs> I always use my client's products. It wasn't that I was nervous exactly. I sat calmly huddled away out of sight, puffing on a pencil and making notes on a piece of paper with Mr. Samuel's cigar as the program got underway. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Art Ledbetter, introducing your favorite quiz program, The Sky's the Limit. Now, you're all anxious to meet our $76,000 contestant today. So here she is, Miss Tracy Sherwood. Just fine. Welcome back, Miss Sherwood. Tell me, Miss Sherwood, what are you going to do with all the money if you win it? Count it. <laughs> you ask a foolish question, you get a foolish answer. Now, you've got... $38,400. Now, you can stop right where you are if you like. You want to go on? Oh, I should say so after I memorize it. That's the spirit. Is that the spirit, audience? Eh? Okay, fine. All right. And here we go. Here's our first question. Who was the secretary of the treasury under Rutherford B. Hayes? John Sherman. Correct. Miss Sherwood, you now have exactly $76,800. Do you wish to continue? E equals MC. Well, no, no, I said, do you want to continue? Oh, I thought you asked me what... Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, here we go. Quiet, everybody, please. Miss Sherwood, what is the basic formula for nuclear fission. E equals MC squared. Correct! Right! All right, Miss Sherwood, the stratosphere's the limit. You now have $153,600. Do you want to try for the network? <laughs> Oh, excuse me for stopping the action here, but I simply must tell you what's been going on off camera. When Tracy answered the secretary question, old man Samuels, well, that's the young man you met a few minutes ago, but who aged considerably after that answer. Old man Samuels looked at me as if to say something, made a short gurgling sound, and hasn't been heard from since. As for me, I'm proud to say I was galvanized into action. I took a hundred to one shot chance. I quickly scribbled a question on a piece of paper and sent it out. A message from Garcia arrived just as Tracy won the $153,000 question. Okay. So you're determined to go on for $307,200, Miss Sherwood. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Here is the... Wait a minute, just a second. What's this? Excuse me, Miss Sherwood. Oh, I don't understand this, but orders is orders. Miss Sherwood? Here's a question. You must answer it without hesitation and with no corrections, it says here. Are you ready? What's the question? Okay. For $307,200, what is the basic formula for nuclear fission? E equals MC squared. Correct. Right. Miss Sherwood, the stratosphere's the limit. You now have one hundred and fifty-three thousand six hundred dollars. Do you want to try for the network? Oh, excuse me, Mi
What is your name? Quickly. Tracy Young. Wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Sherwood. It's Tracy Sherwood. Oh. <laughs> Remember I told you to think about the Titanic? Well, that quiz show just about wrecked my family. Tracy was furious. She made a vow never to speak to me again, but I couldn't get her to put it in writing. Never was Tuesday morning when I was rushing to get down to my office. Tracy, do you know where my cufflinks are? That'll be $2. What? That's the $2 question. You didn't hide them. I'm going to get back every cent of that $307,200 if it takes me all week. Want to know where your cufflinks are? That'll be $2. Okay, I'm in a hurry. Here's your $2. Thank you. They're in the refrigerator. Now, do you want to try for your glasses? Oh, no, you didn't. That'll be $4. Oh, fine. I can see myself paying $4. Not without your glasses, you can't. Okay, I haven't got time to argue. Here's your $4. Here's four. <clears throat> Where are they? In the bread box. Great. Six bucks for my... Cup links of my glasses. That's nothing. Wait for the jackpot question. What's that? The car keys. Oh, Tracy, what are you doing to me? Well, what did you do to me? Not much you didn't. Beat me out of all that money. Well, two can be as cheap as one. I'm supposed to be the one you love. Do you? Do I what? You love me. That's the $2 question. Okay. It's worth it to find out. Thank you. And yes, I do. Will you kiss me to prove it? That'll be four dollars. Okay. Okay. And there's your kiss. Honey. Yeah? You want to try for eight? <laughs> <laughs>